think we'll go ahead and get get started. Um, today's community call, we'll we'll hear from Johanna with the LT, Robin with technical updates, and then if our uh, some of our subgroup folks join, I uh, think Fatima's on uh, and and Richard for the documentation team. We'll hear from everybody. So with that, um, Johanna, can you give an update uh, from the Zeke LT? Sure. Uh, so first, to repeat the thing that I always say, if you're interested in what the LT is doing, um, we meet bi-weekly and the meeting minutes are public and are published approximately one week after each meeting. You just have to go onto the LT page on seek.org and they are linked from there. So I think since the last community meeting, we had um, two meetings of the leadership team and um, a bunch of the time there was taken up actually discussing small matters about Seek Week. So things like um, sponsorships, how to have a keynote speakers, who is going to um, use training slots, how much space there is for sponsorships and so on. So um, a bunch of small things which all take a time and most of these either have been announced or will be announced in the future. Um, <clears throat> Apart from that, um, we started um, talking about community memberships. So uh, we basically want to um, establish more structures that allow for good community participation and feedback and potentially restructure the way how uh, the elections of the leadership team are done. <laughs> and um, this will, talking about this will probably take quite a few months. And we just started the explorative process of that. Um, where uh, we talked about the community structures and other open source projects. So far, we have taken a look at how um, DB and Ubuntu, PostgreSQL, OpenSSL, Python, and Rust are structured. And we will, uh, and we saw that there is quite a bit of diversity in how the different communities uh, structure their com um, structure themselves. And um, we will reach out to a couple of them and um, ask them how their experiences with uh, their um, respective um, yeah, structures have been going. Um, apart from that, um, the LT um, for the last few months has been um, <clears throat> creating a mission and vision and value statement for the SEEK project. We are basically done for that. We are going to circulate it a little bit wider in the project for more feedback and are probably going to uh, put it out around SEEK week. And um, I think those were really the big main points of what we did in the last month. There was quite a bit of time also spent on talking about the training and testing subgroups, but I think um, Fatima can talk about the testing subgroup, uh, training subgroup, and Robin will probably mostly mention what testing has been doing. So I think that's it for me. Thank you so much for that update. Um, Robin, can you give a technical update and also touch base on the training subgroup? Uh, the testing subgroup, I suppose. Sorry, that's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, so testing is indeed uh, the key word these days. <laughs> so because we are in our um, release candidate uh, phase, so we um, got we we started with an early beta version of 4.1. We now have a first release candidate out, and um, that has been kind of exercised quite a bit. Um, a lot of credit actually to Ashish at LBA. Um, here, who uh, was really putting some stress testing on on that version. So we found a few bugs, actually, um, a few crashes, which I believe um, have all been squashed at this point. Or at least I think we are still waiting, maybe for one or two, for final confirmation that they are not showing up anymore. Um, we had some parsing issue, I think, in SNMP, uh, which must have been in there for a while already, actually. Um, also some some broker and CAF issues. Um, and um, generally some stuff I think found by, by ASAN, the, the address sanitizer. So running that live actually was very helpful, which we have not been doing consistently in the past. Um, yeah, so this is all under control. Um, Tim, our release master is actually staying on top of all that activity going on and, and he's tracking um, what's the, the patches that, that need to go in and also make sure that they get a master as well so that we, we stay consistent. Uh, I believe if nothing um, serious shows up today anymore, that there will be a release candidate two coming out today. At least I, that's the plan at this point. So watch for that. And that uh, ideally will be very close to um, that, or maybe ideally identical <laughs> to that uh, 4 one release um, that will then come soon after, unless anything else shows up. So this is, in other words, 
um, as it too is your last, hopefully, I would say your last chance of um, reporting stuff that um, you might notice with that new release that is not um, according to what you would expect. Yeah, so and this this is I think indeed the main technical update uh, because all the the cycles or most of the cycles um, over the last uh, couple of weeks, oh, three weeks at this point um, have been going into this. Thanks. When the um, RC two comes out, other than those who are in the the testing group, um, if anyone else on this call wants to help, how would you suggest they do that? Sure. Um, so the, the, uh, the, the best case for us is if you can actually download the new version, either from source code um, or um, I suppose Johanna will be creating binaries again shortly after the, the RC2 is out. Um, install them on a test system in your live environment and um, see first if, if it's working as expected. And uh, if you can actually run it in parallel with the same configuration to your existing Zeek installation to afford it all, uh, notice for any substantial differences. So there, there sh um, I would say there shouldn't be anything that, that really sticks out. So if you see something, um, let us know. And the best way to do that is either opening an issue on GitHub or uh, just leave a message on, on, on Slack and, and somebody will, will pick it up and we'll take it from there. Thank you so much for that update. Anybody have any questions for Robin? All right. Uh, Fatima, can you give an update on the uh, training group? Hi, Bert. Uh, sure. So um, we have started working on Zeek Week's introduction to Zeek training and the content creation uh, subgroup. Uh, we are like five people in that. And then we meet every week on Friday to work on uh, the different tasks we have been assigned uh, to work on, uh, specifically for um, the content creation for Zeek Week's training. Uh, other than that, uh, we are planning to use Docker for running Zeek exercises this year. Uh, this is the first time we will be uh, using Zeek in Docker in the introduction to Zeek training. So we are pretty excited about that. And hopefully we are planning to host a webinar as well uh, if it works out uh, and if people, uh, if, 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 if people in Connect Group have uh, some, some time that we can uh, host a webinar uh, with people and share more information about what we are going to cover in this, this year's Zeek Week uh, introduction to training. And, uh, some and share some more detail on how you will be running Docker and what are the resources and make the resources available to um, to the audience before, like way before ahead of time uh, of Zeek Week. So that's in planning. And uh, hopefully uh, we are targeting, we are still targeting to get the Zeek Week training done by end of August. So that's all about um, work that is in progress uh, on Zeek Week training specific specifically. Other than that, we have um, also, we are planning to have our first draft of Zeek approved training framework ready by the end of August uh, for a review um, for Zeek LT. And we will then go from there. And once we have it reviewed and um, straightened out, then we will target to run the uh, introduction to Zeek training uh, through the framework and see if we can get that approved by hopefully end of September. So those were like two important pieces of updates from uh, the training subgroup that we are actively working on. So if there are any questions or comments. I, I had a, a comment for you or a question, Fatima. When you, when you all, um, or when we do the uh, webinars and, and you put out stuff about the training, would you like to stress how important it is for people to pay attention if they're gonna play the CTF this year? Oh, yes. Um, so uh, we are actually working uh, with, um, with Anthony on uh, aligning our exercises towards uh, CTF so that, so, that people can gain, uh, so, so that people can get best of both worlds. So we are, uh, focusing to, uh, we are focusing our exercises that if people have attended the training and then if they play CTF, then they can use stuff and tips and tricks that are, uh, that are disclosed or that are um, shared in training and use them in CTF and then like CTF challenges. So we are coordinating with Anthony as well uh, to kind of like align our exercises uh, more so that people can, you know, learn what they have, uh, people can apply what they have learned in training and then they can apply that directly to the CTF and solving the challenges and puzzles in, in this year's CTF. So yeah, that was a good point that you asked, Amber. 
So we are pretty excited about that too. I, I like how everything's coming together, like the the testing, you know, with the release and with with training and and the CTF and how it all ties into Zeke Week, which leads me to the other tie-in. Richard, can you give an update on documentation and how documentation sort of ties all of this together as well? Sure. So documentation, uh, we had our first run of issues that were in GitHub that we had a, a little process that we followed to try to get those resolved, for the 4.1 release, and all of those uh, were resolved. And I'd like to thank Tim. Um, he's not on the call, but uh, he was instrumental in getting the materials that I had uh, adapted from what others had created and actually putting it into the documentation in, in GitHub. So I appreciate that. Um, the other half of the documentation project is the Zeke in Action video series. And if you haven't checked those out recently, uh, head on over to the Zeke YouTube channel. And uh, Amber has created a playlist where you can see all seven videos. And we had a flurry of activity at the very end of July. Um, three, three new videos. Uh, video four was where do I put my sensor? Video five <clears throat> is what is this new device? And video six was how to monitor a wireless network. I'm particularly pleased with that with that last one because uh, it came up as a topic, I believe, in Slack. And although no one said it there, the the issue most people think of is, oh, well, just put your NIC in monitor mode and you'll see everything. Um, that may be a, a top or that may be an approach you can use when you're running a red team assessment against a wireless network and you're just trying to collect the uh, necessary key material to do a brute force attack against the the psk but if you're actually trying to monitor for for network security monitoring purposes and get a, a decent amount of traffic um well i'll le i'll leave the uh, the conclusion to you go ahead and watch the video and if anyone wants to try to reproduce what I did, um, I tried to make it as, as reproducible as possible, explaining exactly um, all the resources I used, um, tried to minimize any changes so that someone else could just try it. And if I totally blew it and got it all wrong, I'd like to hear about that too, because uh, you know I'd like a way to, to easily monitor a wireless network. But looking forward, we have uh, more videos in play. We may have our first contribution by someone else for the Z Connection series. So I'm really hoping that that comes through. And finally, if, if you would like to contribute a video to the Z Connection series, uh, just get in touch with me. Slack is probably the easiest way and uh, hoping to hear from, from some more contributors. Thank you so much, Richard, for that. And, and that also that, that community member that is looking at creating one actually came out of the training group. So the training, testing, and documentation group all are very closely tied together with each release and everything that's going on. So if you want to participate in any of those, uh, please drop us a line in Slack on the, on the mailing list. We'll get you to the right groups. If you have ideas for um, Zeke in action and you just need some pointers on how to record it or what's the best way to go about it. Uh, Richard has said to contact him and uh, he'll, you know, give you all the pointers that that he can uh, and help you uh, get started in that. So um, it doesn't have to be, you know, uh, production quality, you know, like you would see on TV. We, it's, it's community. We're all in this together. So uh, feel free to learn something and share something. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add to that, Richard, but um, and I certainly don't want to put words in your mouth, but uh, I think you are ready to help folks uh, should they need it, correct? Yes, even to the point where if you wanted to do it, say over Zoom and share your screen and mm -hmm. I could record that way or whatever it is, if we'll figure it out. Um, you know, we want to make sure that whatever we deliver to the audience is is clear. People can follow along and understand what you're trying to say. If that takes some coaching or whatever, we'll work on that. Um, but yeah, we're, we're here to help and just get in touch with us. We, we can't know that you're, you're interested if you never say anything. Oh, and also since I'm doing so much media now for YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe and click the bell so that when well, we upload a new video, you'll be notified. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much for, the, for that reminder to everyone. 
the last topic um, is, is Zeek Week, which Johanna mentioned. Um, the uh, call for participation for papers and such, were, we were going to close, uh, I believe, yesterday, but we're going to have to extend that. And now with the new, with the Delta variant and, and some folks that wanted to come, now not sure they'll be able to come, you're going to see a revised call for papers where we're going to stress remote, uh, not only remote participation from the audience, but remote participation from our speakers as well. So pay attention, look look for that uh, blog post that'll be coming out. And if you've hesitated to submit a talk because you thought you had to be there in person, go ahead and submit that talk um, and we'll take a look at it uh, a little bit later in the month. So um, and tell your friends if, if they've hesitated because they don't want to, you know, didn't want to travel, um, please tell them to submit the those talks as well, because uh, we want to hear from everybody, um, and we'll we'll make it work out. We'll, we're very flexible on that point. We'll figure out a way, like Richard said. Uh, are there any questions from anybody about any of the topics that was presented today? No? All right. Well, I'll give you back a few minutes of your day, and uh, we look forward to speaking with you soon. Have a good one, everybody. Thanks, Amber. Bye, folks. Thanks, Amber.